Good morning. It is the 17th Sunday after Pentecost, and we welcome one and all as we gather to worship God on this day. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, Father and, to and to the Son, Son and, and to the, the Holy Spirit. Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Steadfast God, as the seasons change, we see that you are still at work in the world transforming hearts and situations. We praise you for all you do to repair injustice bringing peace to places of hostility and working for goodness to prevail among neighbors and nations. You have shown us the true face of power in Jesus Christ, reaching out with healing and hope to touch the desperate lives. Let us see the face of Jesus in this time of worship and fill us with renewed energy and insight so that we can join in your work to bring justice and joy into the world you love. And we do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor, as together we say, Lord of love, today we confess our sin of indifference. Too often we turn away so we don't have to see pain, suffering, or injustice, even when the evidence is right before our eyes. We don't like to feel uncomfortable. We don't want to feel responsible. In your great mercy, forgive us, Lord. Teach us a new way to live. Give us courage to love others as you love us and to respond to the cries of others with the humility and graciousness we have witnessed in Jesus. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, O merciful God, that your church being gathered by your Holy Spirit into one may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be I will take you from the nations and gather you from every country and bring you home 
to your own land. I will pour clean water upon you, purify you from all defilement, and cleanse you from all your idols. A new heart I will give you, and put a new spirit within you. I will take from your body the heart of stone, and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you, make you walk in my ways, and observe my decrees. You shall dwell in the land I gave to your forebears. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever, world without end. Amen. A reading from Matthew. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven? or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Whoa, the, the big guys, the big boys in Jerusalem are duking it out with Jesus. And it gets... A bit nasty. I don't know about you, but I think this is worth a second look. But first, let's let's reel it back a little bit to figure out just what led to this moment of priestly testosterone in the temple. The day before this story happens, the day before, thousands, thousands of pilgrims are traveling from all over the Middle East to come to Jerusalem, the holy city, to celebrate the Passover, to come to Jerusalem to celebrate the exodus from slavery in Egypt under another domination culture at the precise time that they are living in oppression under the domination culture of Rome. The place was a tinderbox. And Jesus chooses this moment, and it, it is no coincidence, Jesus chooses this moment to act out, to bring to life the words of the prophet who said that when the Messiah comes, the Messiah is going to come from the Mount of Olives to the gates of the city riding on a donkey. And, and that's what Jesus does. And and the importance of that, it, it was not missed by anyone. L listen, and this is from 
the Kingdom New Testament by N.T. Wright, listen to the reaction of the people. The huge crowd spread their cloaks on the road. Others cut branches from the trees and scattered them on the road. The crowds who went ahead of him and those who were following behind shouted out, Hosanna now to David's son, God's blessing on the coming one, the one who comes in the Lord's own name, Hosanna in the highest. And when they came to Jerusalem, the whole city was gripped with excitement. The crowd had pointed out Jesus as a messianic figure. And without uttering a word, Jesus proclaimed, this is God's world, not Caesar's. But he, he wasn't finished. According to Matthew's chronology, Jesus moves from the city gates directly to the temple. And all hell is about to break loose. Jesus begins to turn over the tables of the money changers and the people who were selling pigeons and lambs for sacrifice in the temple and, and drawing on the words from Isaiah and, and from Jeremiah, the two great prophets of, of their history, Jesus says, my temple, my temple is to be a house of prayer for all people and you have made it a den of thieves. Now, now, to understand just how significant those words are, let's, let's go back to the book of the prophet Jeremiah and listen to what he says. And, and these words are addressed to the leaders of the people, to the rulers of the temple. And Jeremiah said, do not trust in these deceptive words. Do not say the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. If you amend your ways and your doings, if you begin to act justly with one another, if you no longer oppress the alien, the orphan, and the widow, or shed innocent blood in this place, if you do not worship other gods to your own hurt, then I will dwell with you in this place. Then, in the land that I gave to your old ancestors forever and ever, there I will live. And then he goes on to say, but here you are, you come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say we are safe, only to go on doing these abominations has this house, which is called by my name, become a den of thieves. Make no mistake about it, every child, every adult, who was taught in the synagogue was familiar with those words. Every child, every adult knew that this was an indictment of the chief priests and of the elders. Well, you, you got to picture th this particular one um, because with the temple in, in an uproar, Jesus is still not finished. I mean, pigeons are, are, are squawking, feathers are, are flying, lambs are bleeding. The people who sold or who, who exchanged the money, they're in their hands and knees picking up coins in the midst of the sheep stuff that had dropped from the frightened lambs. And Jesus begins to heal in the temple the lame, and the blind who came to him, the lame and the blind were not allowed in the temple. And the children, and this is important, the children began to sing hosannas and songs of David from the mouths of babes. Children identified Jesus as Messiah. And having stirred up enough for one day, he left. And if you have closed captioning on your devices right now, it should read, and the orchestra plays dramatic music. The next day, he comes back, and he begins to, to teach in the temple. And the authorities, 
They've had enough of his act. They have had enough of him. And they say, listen, this carpenter from Nazareth, this, this country boy has got to go. We've got to deal with him, but we have to deal with him with big city finesse. Because if they just throw him out of the city or throw him in jail, there, there is going to be a revolution. Uh, so they decide instead to ask him a question, to try to trick him into blasphemy so that they can deal with him. So, so they ask him a question, and, and Stanley Hauerwas, I, I, I love the way he puts it. He, uh, Stanley Hauerwas says that the rulers, the rulers of the people, the, the, the elite, the priests and, and the elders who were wealthy landowners who had gotten where they were on the backs of the poor and the marginalized, they say to Jesus, by what authority are you teaching and cleansing the temple? And who gave you the authority to heal the lame and, and the blind and to start a children's choir? Who gave you that authority? See, the question that they really wanted to ask him was, who do you think you are, the Messiah? Because you're walking around like you own the place. But they didn't ask that question. And, and Jesus, in a wonderfully rabbinic moment, said these words. It, and, and, and this is the way debates began. Jesus said to them, what do you think? What do you think? It's a rabbinic way of starting a debate. And then he tells them a parable about two brothers, about a man who had two brothers. Now, now the Greek word is not brothers. The Greek word is a man had two children. And he owns a vineyard, and he wants them to go and work in his vineyard. And the vineyard in Old Testament times and in Jesus' time is symbolic of Israel. Here we have two children of Israel. And their father says, I want you to go out and work in my vineyard. And one says, I am not going to do that. But, but later, later changes his mind and goes out and, and works. The second son, he says, yes, father, whatever you want. And, and then that, that's not do it. What Jesus has done is to draw a picture, a very clear picture, that the chief priests, that the elders, they're the second son. They're the second son. You see, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are about as low as you can get on the spectrum they got it. The tax collectors and the prostitutes, they heard John talk about the kingdom of God. They heard John talk about the kingdom of God and they jumped into the muddy water of the Jordan and came out with their lives changed. The chief priests, they didn't. They didn't. This is a damning moment. Jesus, the carpenter from Nazareth, the country boy, confronted the power and the forces of wealth and religion in the holiest place on earth. And God's great reversal, the last shall be first and the first shall be last, was proclaimed. And in John Dominic Crossan's words, God's great divine cleanup began. And the mic dropped. So, what does all this, this wonderful story, what does it mean for us today? Stanley Hauerwas says that all too often, all too often, this, this passage is used 
as a way of trying to point out that the followers of Jesus, the Christian church, have replaced the Jews as God's chosen people, have left the Israelites behind. And to that, Hauerwas says an emphatic, no, no, no. Jesus was Jewish. His disciples were Jewish. Jesus did not have a conflict with the people of Israel. He had a conflict with the religious leaders and with the elites of the temple. So the question, I guess, is, what do we make of this story and this parable? And I think it's an invitation for us to look in the mirror and to ask ourselves, how might we, the followers of Jesus, be like the second child? How might we, as church, be a people who say, yes, Lord, I believe, and then turn a blind eye? to suffering and injustice, to hunger, to poverty, to racism, to the abuse of our planet, to environmental catastrophes that put the future of our great-grandchildren at risk. In what ways are, are, are we like the second child? In, in what ways are we like the chief priests and the elders? In what ways are we guilty of trying to protect an institution at the risk of the kingdom of God? Stanley Saunders who is a professor of theology at Columbia Seminary, says the takeaway, the takeaway from, from this story ought to be that believing is about deciding which power and whose power is legitimate. See, Jesus said, Jesus said, if you want to be my disciples, you need to take up your cross and follow me. Follow me into difficult places. Follow me into difficult conversations. Follow me into difficult decisions. But follow me. My friends, which child are we going to be? The kingdom of God is at hand. Are we prepared to launch ourselves into the muddy waters and come out as renewed people? Are we prepared to stand in line be behind chains forever tax collectors and prostitutes who are leading the parade into the glorious kingdom of God, which is a kingdom of justice and peace for all God's children? And let the closed captioning say the orchestra plays the hallelujah chorus. Let all God's children say amen.
we affirm our faith in the words of the Shema, as together we say, Hear, Hear O Israel, Israel, the Lord our God, God the Lord, Lord is one. one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us pray. God of our past and our future, God of healing and hope, we come before you with grateful hearts, trusting that you walk with us through every situation. Today, we pray for those who are facing danger and despair in these times, those living with hunger that never ends, those facing mistreatment and indeed violence because of their religion or the color of their skin those challenged by the corona pandemic and measures to control it, and all those anxious about their future. We pray for those who work to relieve suffering in these places and those working to bring justice and peace. Bless them all with your courage. Lord, in your love, Hear our prayer. We pray for those wrestling with sorrow or discouragement in any area of their lives, for those living with illness or pain, for those coping chronic conditions or disability, for those who know the pain and trauma of bereavement. And we pray for all those who work to bring healing and comfort, support and care in our community. Bless them all with your compassion. Lord, in your love, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. <clears throat> we pray for all who feel helpless or hopeless in this present time. For those facing unemployment, struggling to make ends meet. For those caught up in the pain of misunderstanding or broken relationships. For any working through situations of conflict at home or at work. And we pray for all who offer guidance and support to face these challenges and for those who work to bring about healing, hope, and reconciliation. Bless them all with your wisdom and patience. Lord, in your love, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those who have departed this life and at our rest, especially those who have touched our lives with their love, shaped us with their vision and dreams, and helped us to make us who we are. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the departed rest in peace, and may they rise in glory. Amen. Let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now, peace for all of your children, O God, all Holy One. You are our Father and our Mother, and we are your children. Open our eyes and our hearts so that we may be able to discern your work in the universe. 
and be able to see your features in every one of your children. May we learn that there are many paths, but all lead to you. Help us to know that you have created us for family, for togetherness, for peace, for gentleness, for compassion, for caring, for sharing. May we know that you want us to care for one another as those who know that they are sisters and brothers, members of the same family, your family, the human family. Help us to beat our swords into plowshares and our spears into pruning hooks so that we may be able to live in peace and harmony, wiping away the tears from the eyes of those who are less fortunate than ourselves. And may we know war no more as we strive to be what you want us to be, your children. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love and pray for today, tomorrow, and forever.